Michael in Lake Forest, California writes to me, when choosing a subwoofer, I splurged on a Rel T9X. Mm. Love those Rels. Um, it never occurred to me to try hooking it up to the magnaplaners because I had heard some technical reason why that wouldn't work. Integration problems, slow transients, and something about phase amplitude and mixing a dipole with a unipolar speaker. Blah, blah, blah. Exactly. <laughs> One day, I decided to give it a try and went back through setup using two of your setup SACDs, thank you, uh, from Octave Records, and played the bass tracks on reference music and the loudspeaker, two of our other Octave uh, releases. And what an improvement. Can you discuss why some in the audiophile world recommend not pairing planers to subwoofers? Yeah, because they are buying into a common myth that had at one point some basis in truth, but properly done is total malarkey, okay? It's just a myth that we don't want to pay attention to. And myths have a habit of hanging around. They just do, and then people take them for granted. That's why they're myths. So here's the deal. Uh, and I'll tell you a little bit, I'll tell you a little quick story. Way back when, when I first started in this crazy hobby of high-end audio, I had a pair of speakers. I had, oh gosh, I've been through so many. I think they were acoustats, but, th and that's an electrostatic, a planar speaker. And it's not planar, but you know, it's a panel speaker. Very fast, very quick. And they just don't have any bass. They don't have any dynamics, just the way panel speakers are. And I wanted bass, and I wanted dynamics. And there was this new thing out there. At the time, it was uh, by a company called M&K, and, K, and uh, it was a, a subwoofer. And I thought, this is the answer to my uh, dreams, right? Because here is a separate speaker that is going to give me the bottom end that my Acoustat panel speakers don't have. I hooked it up and I cranked it up and started playing music. And man, it had better bass, but I could hear the subwoofer. I mean, it was over there, whoom, 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 whoom. Like, eh. So I went and I turned it down a little bit and you've probably heard this story before. Anyway, over the course of two or three hours, I finally got it to sound just right. And when I went to look and see where the setting was, it, it, it was off. <laughs> I turned the volume all the way down. And it just, it couldn't keep up with the panel speaker. Panel speaker was so fast and just sounded natural. And the subwoofer, honk, honk, boom, boom, right? That was a long time ago, but these things, you know, kind of hang around with us. So two things. One, subwoofers have gotten a lot better an awful lot better. Two, we know how to use them now and we know their purpose. Their purpose is to make up for deficiencies in the room. We're your speakers, but if, if you buy one of our speakers like the Aspens, any of the model of Aspens go down way below what you're going to need to hear. So you don't need a subwoofer for an Aspen loudspeaker to make up for the speaker. You need it to make up for the room. And Aspens have planar drivers. They're very quick. But a proper subwoofer with them sounds invisible. It just makes holes in the room, in the base, get filled. And that's what we do with it. The secret to it is have a great subwoofer, which you do, a REL. And PS Audio will be making subwoofers at some point, And we'll make sure they're great as well. And turning the frequency down. You want to have that really low. So your planer or your whatever you got here, your, your magna planers, um, they don't go down that low and they're very quick. And as long as you keep the frequency low, you will never have a problem with it. And that ends that myth. It's just in how you use it and how the subwoofer is built. Thank you.